Community Hotline is made possible with generous support by the Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission. The Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission advocates on behalf of the public interest on communications policy issues at the local, state, and federal levels. Hi, and welcome back to Community Hotline. This is our last segment tonight. I'm Monica Weitzel, and we're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. We're going to end the show talking with Harry Landers, who is the curator for the International Rose Test Garden. It's a pleasure to have you here, Harry. Thank you for asking me. So you are a member of the Royal Rosarians. Yes. And the curator of the International Rose Test Garden. Tell me first a little bit about the Rosarians, if you would. You've, it's a, an organization that every Portlander Anybody who's been here any length of time knows about it. And I'm a native Portlander, so I've always known about the Rosarians, but not everybody has uh, been around as long as well, I have. We have a lot of new people, but the Royal Rosarians is over 100 years old. Wow. It's very unique, only one in the world. It's a service organization. It's, our goal is to promote the city of Portland and growing roses. Our slogan is, uh, for you in Portland, a rose grows. I love it. And the, wherever the men, uh, prime minister goes, he plants a rose. Wherever he goes? Yeah. I mean, in, like other cities and that, is that what you all, mean? All festivals throughout the Northwest, and then they do a prime minister's trip, and they travel different countries. They've planted uh -huh. a rose at the uh, end of the uh, Cape Hope. They've planted wow. a rose at uh, Cape Canaveral uh, all over Europe. Wow, I didn't know that. See, I imagine there's a whole bunch of stuff about the Royal, Royal Rosarians that I don't know. Yeah, there is. Uh -huh. they, they always seem a little mysterious. You know, you know, in parades, they wear these great outfits, and then they're always promoting the roses, but you know, you're, you're really ambassadors for the city of Portland. We are, and right? we're official ambassadors, and we, uh, our foundation supports a lot of things like uh, uh, outdoor school. Mm, yeah. Yeah, and mentorships. very worthy, worthy cause. So how does someone become a member of the Royal Rosarians? And, and women are welcome Absol there too, absolutely. because when I was a kid, I don't think that was the case. No, no it yeah. wasn't. Uh, you have to be, uh, a member has to recommend you. Oh, okay. And you go through a review process. Oh, wow, so you have to be pretty special, huh? <laughs> so, how much time do you say you would, uh, as a Rosarian, how much time would you devote to that? Is it as much as you want or as little as you want or is there a, you know, a certain amount of time that you have to commit to, to that organization? Yes, as much as you want, oh. as much as you can. Right, okay. So, um, tell me now a little bit then about the Rose Test Garden that, first of all, there's a competition that's coming up, yes. correct? It's Tell a, me about that. It's a Rosarian Rose Garden Contest. It's nearly 80 years old. Wow. The idea is to have people grow roses. And this have, is the city of roses here. Yes. Portland is the city of roses, yes. And there's no cost to it. And so there's no, no fee to apply or to enter, no. submit your, your, your uh, roses. And uh, if you go on the website and just click on events, you can download the application. Mm -hmm. uh, it tells you uh, the biggest thing, 30 points alone is just garden maintenance. Hmm. So, so tell me how this works. Say I have roses that I grow in, at home. Who, who can enter this? Who can enter this contest and, and what all is it you're looking for? You said 30 points for, for yard maintenance? For just the rose bed maintenance. If you live within uh, 20 miles of Pioneer Square, mm -hmm. you can enter. And uh, there's all different categories as long as you have 12 roses or more. Oh, okay. And 12 rose bushes? 12 rose bushes, okay. yes. Okay. And uh, some years they're not blooming. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. And that's some right. years are past blooming, so we take that all into consideration. So what happens if it's a year where, I mean, is it, is it a little late this year? Because I know a lot of the flowers are a little late. Yeah, we are very late this year yeah. compared to last year. But we, that's all taken into consideration. Uh, the entry the ends, uh, closes on May 26th, mm, okay. June 4th, uh, 
about 40 to 50 people go out uh, in teams and they judge the rose gardens. So they'll just come to your home and check it out yep. and, and see how well you maintain your, your rose beds and the, the health of the roses and yep. the quality of them and so on and so forth. That, yeah. sounds, that sounds like fun. And, and a lot of people are very, very proud of their, of their roses. And they should be. Yeah, yeah. And you can have other plants in with them. You can have a formal garden where you have an obelisk or a bird bath. Okay. So there's, there's a lot of different categories. There's one for special needs. Oh, really? So, so then, then what happens then? then when do they, they have a, um, an event where they actually announce the winners, or how does that work? We have a very nice event in the Rosarian Garden at the International Test Garden, and it's, uh, that's June 20th, and uh, there's a very nice awards ceremony. Uh, the Queen attends, ah, and the Rose uh, you get queen. your picture with her, oh, fun. and the Prime Minister and the Royal Gardener, and then there's a very nice uh, hors d'oeuvre lunch, uh, hors d'oeuvre served. Uh, you know, it sounds like there's a lot of pageantry and tradition involved in all this, isn't yes, there? Yes, that's what's nice about it. Yeah, yeah, I, and that appeals to people, people like that, yeah. and they, I imagine they look forward to it every year. They do. Yeah, you brought some pictures, and, I, and I, these are pictures of roses that have been entered, or what, gardens, what are we going to be looking at? Gardens that have been entered. Okay, maybe we could take a look at some of those pictures, you can tell us what it exa exactly is we're seeing. Ah, oh, so pretty. Okay, this is the International Rose Test Garden itself. And this is up at Washington Park. In Washington Park, and this is part of our Portland's Best Rose, where we do a judging of what's oh. the best rose that day. Uh, so that day or that, that, uh, that day. So this is separate from the Rosarian Garden okay. top contest. And if people have never, if they've never been to the International Rose Test Gardens, well, they're uh, missing out. <laughs> this one is our, <sighs> our Centennial Rose. This is Centennial Sunshine. Uh, it is a gar rose that so, uh, we're going to be selling exclusively this year. It's not on the market anywhere but for us. Oh, it's just the, for you. Oh, okay. The company gave us the rose at no cost, so all the proceeds will come into our garden trust fund. Wonderful, wonderful. And, we'll be and so if you go to the website to, to get information on buying that? Yes, and we'll be having it at the garden too, at the garden store. Oh, wonderful. This is an aerial view of the garden. Isn't that beautiful? That is so gorgeous. Thank you. I, I mean, I remember going up there as a kid and as an adult. I mean, it's just, it's always beautiful. This, and is, this picture is someone that you don't often see of the uh -huh. garden coming in from looking up. And the nice thing about this is that when you're there, you can also see Portland. I mean, you yes. know, it's a beautiful view from up there. Um, even if you're not looking at the roses, it's a beautiful view. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. And that is our Queen's Walk, and below is the Royal Rosarian Garden. Oh, okay. It has a plaque. Both of them have plaques for the Prime Minister and for the, each Queen. Nice. And that is our test garden. We are the country's large, oldest test garden. Is that right? So when you say test garden, what is it that you're testing? Uh, well, I'm the official judge for the American Garden Rose Selection, and then uh, six uh, rose companies send their roses to us. And I evaluate them for two years to see what is what is good and what is bad about the roses. Mm. I'm one of the people who helps select what the American public will be buying. Is that right? So, I didn't know that. That's fascinating. So uh, you're testing for um, hardiness or health or you know the, the scent or the you know longevity. What what in, kinds of things? In that case. Uh, 30 points just for disease resistance. Okay. And then does a rose need to be deadheaded? Mm -hmm. uh, does it Don't all roses need to be deadheaded? No. Oh, okay. Shows you what I know. Uh, how do they, are they, how's their habit? Is it open? Do they spread out? Uh, do they repeat bloom often? Huh. We never mark a rose down for, if it does not have a fragrance, but mark it up if it does. Ah. But fragrance is only five points. Okay. See, I, I like fragrance. It, some people don't, though. Some people right. that bothers them. I love a fragrant rose. Yeah. And I love the, I love the trellises there too. Aren't That's they so spectacular? Beautiful. Yeah, they really are. They really are. So, what qualifies you to to do this? I have a degree in horticulture. Okay, well, that works for me. <laughs> and I've been with the garden now 29 years. Wow, that's a long time, that's a long time. So the garden, um, when you go up to the garden, um, anybody can go. Yes, and it's free. And that, that's a beautiful thing. And look at that, there's the view from there. I yeah. mean, how spectacular is that? It's one of the premier places for 
visitors to go, isn't it? It is estimated that we have 700,000 visitors. <laughs> wow, wow. So if you live in Portland area and you've never been, Better get up there. I mean, that's yep. it really. That's that's one of the places when, when I was a kid and growing up and in in and as an adult, when people came from out of town, it's like, where do you take them? Well, you take them up the Washington Park to the Rose Test Garden because it's fabulous. Right now, we're under a lot of construction. Okay, and what's going on? Uh, we have the water barrel doing a multiple year. Uh, renovation where they have to enclose the reservoirs. So a lot of our roadways are closed. Mm, okay. And uh, we have, we're putting in a brand new American uh, disability um, walkways. A whole oh. main walkway has been... For wheelchair... For wheelchair accessibility for wow. walkers. Uh, so we'll take out the steps that go down to the stainless steel fountain. That's great. And That's there'll be great. a ramp in there. The whole uh, walkway will be all concrete. Mm. That's great, that's great, because people of all ages and all capabilities want to, want to go see that, it, so that's yeah. important. And that's because of all the construction, it is important for people to bring the max up or, or rely on our shuttle that so takes you all through the park. Parking's limited. Very limited. Yeah. It's a big headache for us. I, I bet. You'll be happy when it's done. Oh, I'm yes. Sure. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be happy when it's done. So, okay, so just to, to recap, the Rose Garden Contest is is it? Are you accepting app, uh, submissions now or applications yes. now? Okay. Until May 26. Until May 26, and then the actual um, award ceremony is on uh, June 20th. June 20th. Okay. Okay. And people can get the information from the website for yes. that. And this is. And so, um, anything else that we should know about the Rose Test Gardens or about the contest that we haven't well, talked about. The garden about. itself is 100 years old this year. 100 years old this year, now that's pretty impressive. Uh, one of my volunteers found the paperwork February 14th in 1917. February 14th is Oregon's birthday too, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. I, yeah. Not sure on that, uh, yeah. but um, that was officially named the uh, Test Garden by the American Rose Society. So we're celebrating with uh, August 19th, we're having a Wine and Rosa Gala. Mm. That'll be a ticketed event. Mm -hmm. And then on the 26th of August, we are having a free community day where there'll be all sorts of activities for families from 11 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Uh, it'll be free activities, it'll be food, uh, lots of things. And what day is that again? August 26th. 26, okay. So and August will be a busy month. Very busy, and then in the evening will be a free salsa concert. Oh, fun! Oh, I got to mark that on my calendar. It'll that be a sounds lot like of fun. a great day. Yeah, Just and and August is usually really nice in yes. Portland. That's one of the months you can usually count on getting some good weather. So that'll be great. Oh, wonderful. Well, I appreciate you coming. It's um, the the Rose Festivals coming up. Yes. Before too long here. Um, hopefully, there will be a lot of beautiful roses blooming then. And. Um, uh, Looking forward to that. It's been a rough year. Uh, last year, March 22nd, we had our first bloom. Wow. And now we're not even close. Isn't that, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's been very late this year, I know. So I, I hope that, you know, we'll get some sunshine here so we can get those blooms out and really have a lot of beautiful roses to but, uh, appreciate, but. It will come. Okay, I have faith in you, Harry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for sharing your information, and, and I think a lot of people that didn't didn't know all all those wonderful details about the garden and the competition are, are happy to have heard it. So thank uh, you so thank much. Thank you. You bet. And thanks for watching Community Hotline. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. We'll be back here again next week at the same time. So we'll see you then. I'm Monica Weitzel. Good night. is made possible with generous support by the Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission. The Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission advocates on behalf of the public interest on communications policy issues at the local, state, and federal levels.
What local community media is to us is literally our lifeline to what's going on in the lives around us. The absolute most important thing that happens in your neighborhood. People's local communities are usually what's most important to them. Because we're the faces, the smiles, the peoples, and the personalities of the community. To not only give people a voice, but to have their voice heard. The Rosewood Initiative is a nonprofit community center located on 162nd and Stark. We're focused on serving, building, and connecting the community to resources that will better their lives. Rosewood is so much more than a building. We're a community. In 1977, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European pro golf tours, one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the US Open twice, one in 1.2 billion. The odds of him having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 88. Ernie Els encourages you to learn the signs of autism. Domestic violence can affect all people, regardless of race, gender, age, or economic status. If you or someone you know is living with domestic violence in Clackamas County, there is help. Call Los Niños Cuentan 